welcome back to Clumsy Dog. Yep, welcome back to Clumsy Dog. So remember that tree that we cut down? Yeah. Yeah, and it had that dead circle in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, and all of the tree was decomposing into dirt. Yeah. Yeah, and we said, man, that dirt looks like it would be really healthy dirt. Yeah. Yeah. What did we do with it then? Um, we tested it. We tested it. Right, we tested it. So you, so you can get these soil test things, yeah. and it tells you yeah. how much of various things are in there. I'll let the expert take yeah. over when we get to that part. Yeah. But yeah. come watch this soil test. I was pleasantly surprised, but I'm easily surprised yeah. and amazed on uh, just yeah. regular stuff. So... So uh, stick around and watch this. Yeah. If you like this kind of thing, give us a like, a subscribe. Yeah. We're doing this all the time. We're crazy soil testing mofos. Yeah. We got the dirt. That's right. We gathered the dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We put it in a container. Technically, the instructions do say don't touch the dirt but it was really hard to get it out of the middle of that tree mm -hmm. without using our hands. Not a lot of room to scoop in there, but we weren't really expecting a whole lot of it anyway, so. Yeah. The first test that we did was the pH test. It's a, the easiest one of the tests to do. You put a little bit of dirt, a little bit of water, and a capsule, shake it up really good, and then let it develop for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and I say a minute, it, 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 I think it's more like 10. Yeah. And it'll give you the soil acidity. Yeah. And this is what we got out of the acidity test. Seems like ours is on the uh, slightly acidic yeah. to acidic yeah. level. But right about there. It's yeah. kind of hard to tell in these soil tests exactly. Because yeah. the colors we found aren't like exactly right. So you yeah. kind of have to work, yeah. work between two of them yeah, and kind of yeah, figure yeah. out where you're at. Which I was surprised on how many plants actually love the acid in there. Yeah. Like everything likes it to a certain amount. Are you sleepy? Yeah. You want to go in the other room with your sisters? Yeah. You can always uh, send your soil off to... Uh, Usually your county extension service yeah. will do that. You can contact them. They're with whatever your state university is. There are also some places that you can order them. Um, I actually just pulled up a place on Amazon you can get a test where you you collect the sample send it to them um, Redmond Real Salt does a soil test they do a very very detailed test yeah so the acid test takes just a little bit of soil and a little bit of water and you open the capsule pour it in there shake it up like she said a couple minutes and you have the result now for the other soil tests you need a would you say it was a five to it's one? It's a five to one ratio, one part dirt to five parts water. Right, so we put in a cup and a half of water, which meant we put in half a cup of dirt. Half a cup of dirt. And then you shake it up really good, get a nice slurry, shake, 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 shake that slurry. And then you let it set for as long as it takes to, to what? You have to let it settle out. Okay. Let the, the dirt settle to the bottom. Yeah, let it let it settle and then you're gonna pull out some of the water and put it in the in the tester all the way up to the top, crack another pill in there, and what is it, thirty minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yep. Set a timer, ten minutes, then come back and squint and shine it up to lights and stuff. And uh And to be clear, all of these instructions will yeah. be in whatever soil test kit that you get. Yeah, read the book, you know. Yeah. We're just showing you what our test kit is. You know, you might have something different. Or you opted to mail it off to your exchange or Amazon or whatever. Yes. But And they'll even have their own instructions. Yeah. So, our results of the soil that we tested from inside the dead tree um, that we cut down. Pleasantly surprising. It seems like everything was adequate. So it seems like it's pretty solid soil. Yeah, it's good dirt. Yeah, it's good dirt. The tree is dirt. composting itself. Yep, it's composting itself mm -hmm. down. And I don't know why we might consider that to be surprising. Because, you know, <laughs> dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Um, but yeah, so it's uh, composting itself down from the inside out. And uh, all that stuff is really fertile soil. 
And it really kind of reaffirms our decision to use the logs around our garden beds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like a good decision. Because on the, on the hill, lining the garden beds with the with the lumber is two things. One, it holds the dirt where it's supposed to go. Otherwise, anything we would put in there and turn up first rain, it's sprinting down the hill, right? And then two, I just noticed as kind of a uh, just something I noticed. What's that? What do they call that? Realization. An observation. Observation. Or realization. I know you just you, like go out in, in the summer and move a log that's been sitting there for a long time. You see all the the worms and critters living underneath it, and they're kind of digging themselves trails back and forth between the other part. I got to think that that's just good for the soil around it too. You know. I mean, worm castings are a fertilizer. Worm castings are a fertilizer, and and also. Um, uh, so something else I've noticed is uh, when I'm digging up and tilling the soil, I won't see any worms, any worms, any worms, and then I will hit a root, and then I see nothing but worms all around that root. So I gotta imagine there's some kind of symbiotic relationship there with the moisture and nutrients that are being drawn in, and the worm eating it. If there's anybody that's, what do you call somebody that study, studies worms besides a weirdo? <laughs> if there are any they, weirdos they out there. Entomologist? Entomologist. Entomologist. I think so. If there's anybody that studies worms like that, this is just something I've noticed, you know? Um, you set me straight. I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah, I like think I feel I feel like I like having uh, wood around the garden yard really attracts the worms, so take that forever you will. She's probably gonna cut all of this and you won't hear any of it. But that's what I say. <laughs> but yeah, so we were pleasantly surprised with our results there. And then the big question is, why would we even bother testing any soil? Because that's what I was saying at the end of it. It was like, okay, this is all adequate and everything. If we were to plant in it, would we put anything in it? And she said, yeah, we would probably still put some fertilizer. So I'm like, well, if we're buying a 555 bag of fertilizer anyway, what does it matter if we check it and we find out that we're a little bit low on potash? Because if you're super low on one nutrient versus another you're going to want to adjust the type of fertilizer you put in yeah each of those numbers represents one of those major nutrients um Not like a food group like a pyramid for the plant sort of yeah they need and their... certain plants different plants need different combinations of those mm -hmm. those nutrients a good a good rule of thumb is if it's probably pretty okay and you got weeds growing in it, just throw some manure in it and it'll, it'll most likely be fine. Yeah, if the weeds are eating on it just fine, then you yeah. know it's going to be good for anything else yeah. too. You know. And then you can you can fertilize as you go, give it a few granules of tomato food and whatever as you go as the plants need seem to need it. Yeah, you just don't want to overfeed, right? Right, don't want to overfeed. I know last year when we first planted up on the side of the hill. We did have to feed our tomatoes with um, a little bit of tomato, special tomato food. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I have done this in the past. If you over fertilize your starts, they'll just die. Mm -hmm. They get clogged up and they can't take in any of the nutrients. It's also important to, this is a side note, but if you do get flowers and the flowers fall off, that flower isn't done making a fruit. Shout out to you, Paul. That thing was still gonna make a pepper. <laughs> you shouldn't have trimmed that. Yeah, don't trim those off. <laughs> um, all right, well this has been fun. And if you like this kind of content, drop us a like, drop us a subscription. Notifications, check back. We're trying to do weekly videos and we wanna have a lot to bring you. Be it gardening, be it cooking, be it building something, just making a mess out of this, that, or the other. And we'd love to have you. So we'll see you next time. Bye y'all.